you decided you want to build an electric guitar and maybe buy a kit. You can probably handle the body, but building a neck from scratch can be a daunting idea. And most pre-fretted necks and the ones that come with kit guitars, especially the cheaper ones, have a mediocre finish on the neck and frets. Let me show you how you can take a pre-fretted neck that costs me under $40 and turn it into a custom shop quality neck. We'll do it step by step, and by the end of this video, you will have the knowledge you need to turn any cheap neck into a great one. So stay with me, let's build some guitars. Hi, I'm Yoav, and this is the Electric Luthier. Today, we'll go through the process of taking any cheap pre-fretted guitar neck and upgrading it to a custom shop quality neck. Most guitar kits will have the same type of neck and will benefit from this just as much. I can totally understand anyone who's reluctant to tackle building a guitar neck from scratch. Nothing affects the comfort and playability of a guitar like the neck. You can always improve the sound with better pickups, a new pedal or a new amp. But if a neck doesn't feel right and is not smooth to play, it doesn't matter how beautiful the guitar is. Well, good news! You can get a pre-fretted neck of your preferred style or even a blank uh, paddle headstock, which is what I got, and give it a full makeover to a custom shop finish. The type of headstock is really a personal choice and is the style of the guitar as a whole. But since I'm going for a hybrid type of guitar, I'll make my own headstock shape later. So where do you get the neck itself? Well, for most people, the easiest and cheapest choice would be Amazon or even Walmart. They have fretted necks starting at $34. You probably have your mind set on a particular color or style, and I linked a few examples in the description below. Chances are, when shopping for the lower price end of guitar necks, it originated in China. That does not necessarily reflect on the quality. Gibson makes most of their budget guitars in China. But if you buy directly from Chinese websites such as AliExpress, Shipping times may be a bit more fluid than Amazon. If you're in no rush, you may even be able to get better bargains there and save a few dollars. Since you're giving the frets an overhaul anyway, I'm treating whatever I get as raw material. The original quality of the fretwork itself is secondary. There are American, Canadian and British manufacturers who make wonderful pre-fretted necks but they would be in a different price range altogether. Before I jump into the work itself, and if you like where this is going, hit the subscribe button and also the bell button if you want to get notified when more videos come out. You're also welcome to visit my website, theelectricluthier.com, with tons of more information for the aspiring guitar builder. All right, the work ahead of us is comprised of four parts. First, I'll check the neck and the frets for inconsistencies and height differences. Then I'll be leveling the frets to the same height. Next, I'll have to recrown the frets. And lastly, I'll finish and polish the frets. Each of these steps has its own set of tools and the do's and don'ts. As with any craft, luthiers have their own preferences, methods, some they swear by, and their own whims. I'll try to give as broad as possible a view relying on what I've learned and my own experience. Fortunately, none of the tools we need here are of the expensive sort. I'll link all the tools I'm using below in the description for your convenience. So the package has arrived, you've stripped away the packaging, run your hands along the frets, and if no one is around, probably played a little air guitar. Now the first thing on our list is checking if the neck is totally straight. If the neck is slightly bowed, we can adjust it. But if it's warp, twisted or bowed sideways, which are all quite rare, 
There's nothing we can do with standard tools and you should return it and replace it. You can first just take a look along the edges of the fretboard to get a sense of it. But the actual test is done with the notch straight edge. We're checking how straight and flat the fretboard is, meaning the wooden part, not the metal frets. If you just put a straight edge ruler on the fretboard, it will give you a sense of how flat the frets are and not the fretboard itself. You may want that at the end of the process, not right now. A notch straight edge has notches matching and skipping the exact position of the frets. Most notch straight edges have two different sides to match the majority of guitar scales. The scale of a guitar is the length between the bridge and the nut where the open string is stretched. The total scale length would affect the spacing of the frets. One side usually fits a 24.75 inch scale, typical of most Gibson guitars, and the other side would fit a 25.5 inch scale, typical of fenders. As long as you can have the straight edges sitting on the wood and not the metal, you're fine. Lay the neck on a flat, preferably padded surface and put the notch straight edge on the fretboard in a way that the notches perfectly align with the frets. Take a look at the area where the edge meets the fretboard at eye level. You want to have a light behind the neck to better show if there are spaces between them. If the lower edge is absolutely flush with the fretboard, it's straight. If the edge is touching on the sides and slightly lifted in the middle, you have an up bow. If the middle is touching and the ends are in the air, the neck has a back bow. A lot of necks will have a slight up bow because that's the way they're set up and that's the way a lot of guitarists like it. But regardless of how high an action you prefer when you're actually playing, you'll need to straighten it for the purpose of fret leveling. Straightening or flattening the neck is synonymous with adjusting the truss rod. There are a few types of truss rods, but all of them perform much the same way. In order to flatten an up bow, you need to tighten the truss rod. In order to flatten a back bow, you need to loosen the truss rod. The good old righty-tighty lefty-loosey will do the trick. Now different truss rods come with a variety of interfaces for adjustments. From what I've seen, most Chinese necks will fit a 5 or 4 millimeter Allen wrench, but you may run into hex nuts or X slotted nuts here and there. In most necks, the adjustment is made on the headstock side or the nut side. But some, and mostly older models in acoustic guitars, may have it on the pickup side. Now, most reputable guitars will come with the correct wrench to fit their truss rod. Fun fact! The truss rod is almost 100 years old. Gibson patented the first adjustable truss rod in 1921. Now, here are four tips for easy truss rod adjustment. Always start by slightly loosening the truss rod, meaning turning it left, even if you need to tighten it. It will give you a sense of how difficult it is without having to use too much force, because it's always easier to loosen it. It will also help you loosen the nut if it's a little stuck. Mark the truss rod with a sharpie pen before moving it. A little turn goes a long way and you want to know where you started. If the neck is on a string guitar, always loosen or remove the strings before truss rod adjustments. The first tip will save you if you forgot. <laughs> Start with small increments of rotations and check with the not straight edge. An eighth of a turn may be all you need for a slight bow. Once you have a perfectly straight neck and fretboard, it's time to move on to the frets. Most standard electric guitars will have 22 frets. When the fretboard is flat, we want them all to be the exact same height. How exact? Absolutely exact. 
Any deviation could at some point or area cause fret buzz or string budge, which is the same thing. It's just a matter of perspective. Therefore, you'll need to check fret by fret and check if it's relatively high in relation to its neighboring frets. To achieve this, we have a nifty little tool called a fret rocker. The fret rocker is essentially a straight edge ruler covering three frets at a time and not more. Since the spacing between the frets changes, most fret rockers will have four edges of length ranging between one and four inches to fit any area on the fretboard. Simply put it on every three fret span and try to rock it. If it rocks, the middle fret is higher than at least one of the other two. Since we can't lift the lower frets, only reduce the high ones, we're going to be marking all the high spots. Start from one end of the neck, let's say the nut side. Put the rocker on the first, second and third frets on the high E side of the fretboard and rock it. If it rocks, take a permanent marker or sharpie and mark the fret top in that area of the fret. Repeat this on the same frets but in the middle of the fretboard and again in the lower E string side. If the second fret was consistently higher in all three areas, you should now have the crown of the fret all marked. If only a part of it was too tall, only that part should be marked. Now move one fret down and repeat. If you have a 22 fret neck, you should have to rock your rocker about 60 times to cover the whole neck. And no, there are no shortcuts here. Get yourself in a comfortable position, have your neck positioned at eye level, and just rock it. Once you're done, all the higher frets should be fully or partially marked, and you're ready to start leveling them. Now, three precautions to take before you start leveling the frets. First and foremost, protect your fretboard. Before approaching the neck with any type of abrasive tool, make sure you properly mask it. I prefer to do it even before fret rocking to save me from slip-ups of the permanent marker. You can use different widths of masking tape or just cut along the side of the frets with a scalpel or a very sharp thin blade. Make sure you cover right up to the each fret. You'll need it for the recrowning. Do be careful not to scratch the fretboard with the blade, kind of defeats the purpose. Hold the knife at a very low angle. I'm not a fan of the cutting method, so I got some thin masking tape to minimize the cutting I need to do. Second, remove the nut if you haven't already. You don't want it to get in the way or be damaged. Most nuts should just have a dab of glue holding them in and a gentle tap sideways should remove it. Try and be gentle. After marking on the frets, I like to also mark the rest of the frets with different color. This way I have a good indication when I have reached the lower level and should probably stop. Remember, you always want to remove only as much as necessary and nothing more. Now that everything is marked and protected, it's time to choose your weapon of choice. There are three tools commonly used for fret leveling. The first and probably most common is the leveling beam. These are essentially a perfectly flat steel or aluminum profile with a sanding paper attached to it. You can easily improvise it from an old level or a piece of scrap metal profile with self-adhesive sandpaper or with double-sided tape. But make sure it's perfectly flat. Leveling beams come in different lengths and different grips. The 24 inch ones are a bit cumbersome and are mostly useful for a new or refretted neck. The 8 inch and the 16s are handier and easier to work with, and better suited for localized work. There are also leveling files. They do the same job as the leveling beam. The upside is that they don't wear out, just need cleaning, and they can last you a lifetime. 
The downside is that they do leave some grooves and chatter marks and have a single grit level. Some people swear by them. The third tool is a wood or aluminum radius sanding beam. These are usually used for the fretboard itself, but can also be used for the frets. They work the same way as the leveling beam, but they cover the whole width of the fretboard at once. Naturally, they need to have the same radius as the fretboard. The downside is that you don't always want to sand the whole width of the fretboard. The added value comes with a new or refretted fretboard. It should definitely be great for a final finish with a very high grit paper. Again, when you're leveling frets, you want to remove the least amount of material possible. This is a new neck with the brand new frets. We don't want to wear it out before it's been played. So here are five guidelines to leveled frets. Always use straight parallel strokes along the length of the neck. Diagonal motion may ruin the radius of the frets. Don't use force or pressure on the beam. Let the weight of your tool and hand do the work. Take your time. You want to caress the frets gently, not force them brutally. There's no undo button here. If you're not sure the right grit to begin with, start with a relatively high one. If it seems to not even scratch the surface, switch to a lower grit until you start to get results. After removing the majority of the material needed, start moving back up to finer grits for finishing. The grit range should be somewhere between 400 for the rough ones and up to 1200. If some of the markings have been sanded and you're not sure where and how much more work is needed, just go back to the marker and the fret rocker. Sand and repeat. When done, do a final check with the fret rocker. Now we can move to recrowning the frets. After sanding and filing the frets to an absolute level, you might have flattened the once rounded tops of the frets. In a well fretted neck, those might just be a few frets or areas, but in some cases, if the original fretting was very uneven, if you're dealing with an old worn out neck, or if you sanded with too much enthusiasm, it may be a lot of frets. Recrowning is simply the process of giving the fret its original round shape whilst keeping the height as it is. You just went through a lot of work getting the frets level. You do not want to touch the height, just the shape. Here are a few guidelines for recrowning. We want to bevel the sides of the fret profiles, but not touch the middle, as it is now in the correct height. The shape of the profile needs to be round and not triangular with a sharp, sharp tip on top. So take care to have the highest point of the fret exactly in the middle of the fret. This is where the string bends, and this is where the intonation point of the fret is. And be careful not to overfile the area in the sides of the neck and leave the thicker fret in the middle of the neck. Now there's an array of recrowning tools from different material styles and sizes which can divide into two main categories files that have an abrasive flat side to file the frets and a smooth edge to run along the fretboard without damaging it. The other type are files that have a concave groove shape and size to match the fret profile. The abrasive material here is in the groove itself. As with other tools, I do encourage you to try a few and see which ones you prefer. Okay. Let's get recrowning. Here are four simple steps for crown perfection. Mark the now flat top of the frets that needs crowning. You're aiming to file the width of the marking until you're left with a thickness of a hairline. If working with a straight or triangular file, 
Do not try and file it into a radius, but rather bevel the side at 45 degrees angle outside the radius you want, and then two smaller edges you have created. If working with the designated grooved fret file, just follow the neck radius, the smooth stroke, and watch as the line gets thinner and thinner. When the lines are thin and the frets are rounded, have another pass with a fine grit sandpaper to take out any edges left on the side of the frets. Check again with the fret rocker to ensure that you've done a great job. And lastly, four more steps to fret awesomeness. Do one more pass of filing to the tips on both sides of the neck from top view. Round the tips, it'll be smooth as butter when you run your fingers on it. Try and be thorough, this is not the place you want to cut corners, well, you know what I mean. Take an 800 or 1000 grit sandpaper and gently go over the sides of the frets. This is not meant to actually shape the frets, we've already done that. We're just removing the scratches the files left there. Try to avoid the top of the fret, although if you're gentle, it shouldn't remove anything other than the marker itself. A fret eraser with a lower grit will also do the job, but may remove more material, so be cautious. Now switch to a fret eraser with higher grit and just go over all the frets until they start to give a nice sheen. This can also be done with a fine grade steel wool, although a lot of people find it messy and it should be kept away from the pickups as they are magnetic. The next step is to take a metal polishing paste with a clean cloth, spread it and buff it to a mirror shine. If you have a Dremel tool with a polishing wheel with a polishing compound, you will get even better results and as a bonus, you can possibly also skip the fret eraser. That's it! You should now have a neck that can compare with any custom shop guitar and probably beat most standard guitars. But more importantly, you have a great neck which you will be able to have fun with and play for a bargain price. That's it for today. If you want more information about building electric guitars, articles and free downloadable scale charts, make sure to subscribe, check out the links below and visit us at theelectroluthier.com.